Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so, you all saw the good news earlier today. I am pleased to say that four Americans, uh, Paul Whelan, Evan Gershkovich, Alsu Kurmasheva, and Vladimir Karamurza, are on their way home after being unjustly imprisoned in Russia, in addition to five German citizens and eight Russian political prisoners. I am also happy to share that Secretary Blinken was able to speak with Paul, Evan, and Alsu uh, an hour or so ago, and we expect them to be back in the United States in the coming hours to be reunited with their families. Uh, President Biden and Secretary Blinken have made securing the release of Americans wrongfully detained and held hostage overseas a priority, and we have seen dozens of Americans uh, return home over the past three and a half years. Uh, we are grateful uh, for the support of our allies and partners who helped put a deal together, in particular uh, Germany, Poland, Norway, and Slovenia, and we also appreciate Turkey for providing logistical support for the exchange. Uh, this is uh, something you've heard me say before. This is an issue that is so important and personal uh, to Secretary Blinken. In the first weeks uh, in this department, uh, when he was sworn in as Secretary of State, he met with the families of all Americans wrongfully detained uh, at that time in a video call and continues to meet with families and returnees on a regular basis. He has directly engaged his counterparts on individual cases, uh, and we are also so grateful for the countless individuals across this department and across the interagency who worked tirelessly to secure this outcome and provide support um, on this endeavor over the years. I'm talking specifically about our staff at Embassy Moscow, our staff in Consular Affairs, uh, Roger Karstens and his tireless team in the Special uh, Envoy for Hostage uh, Affairs Office, uh, our team in the Europe Regional Bureau, uh, and all the other regional bureaus and embassies who have made days like this possible. Uh, today, we celebrate that Paul, Evan, Alsu, Vladimir, and others are free and recommit our efforts to secure the release of Americans who remain wrongfully detained or held hostage. Uh, so with that, Daphne, if you want to kick us off. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, could you detail a little bit more of Blinken's involvement in this deal, sort of what conversations he's had, and where did this idea of widening the deal to include more people to be released and get Germany involved come from? We've heard this idea was being kicked around state. Was it Blinken's idea, or where did where did it come from? So, uh, look, I'm, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the negotiating process beyond just saying that uh, today's exchange is a feat of diplomacy that uh, could have only been achieved uh, with leaders like like President Biden, like Secretary Lincoln, like National Security Advisor uh, Jake Sullivan that understand the vital importance of diplomacy and understand the vital importance that, is, that our alliances and partnerships can play in situations like this. It's the largest multi-country swap of its kind, resulted in the release of 16 individuals currently detained in Russia. That included, as I said, three American citizens, one a U.S. lawful permanent resident, uh, five U.S. German citizens, and uh, seven uh, Russian political prisoners. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is something that required extensive engagement uh, with partner countries, and it started at the very top uh, with President Biden and, of course, uh, Secretary Blinken and National Security Advisor Sullivan and, and their respective teams uh, as well. Um, so this is something that uh, we are very happy to see days like this when our tireless efforts come together and we're able to see American citizens um, uh, reunited home. Uh, and I know Jake Sullivan has said that you're sort of regarding this as separate issues, but in your mind, does this deal signal at all that Putin might be ready to talk peace with Ukraine or repair relations with the U.S. at all? That's certainly for the Russians and for President Putin to speak to. It's not uh, something that uh, we would ascertain. Uh, as the National Security Advisor said, these are uh, separate uh, and totally unique issues. While, of course, we welcome this news and welcome that uh, four Americans are going to be reunited with their loved ones, uh, Ukraine continues to be 
under attack and the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine uh, continues to be uh, aggressed on by the Russian Federation. And in that regard, the United States will continue to support our partners in Ukraine. Uh, you saw us do so as recently at the beginning of this week with the announcement of a, uh, another uh, presidential drawdown authority. Uh, Camilla, go ahead. Thanks, Rodan. Um, I think I can say on behalf of many of our colleagues that this is a great day uh, for the State Department uh, and across uh, the administration. For the United so, States. The United States, so congratulations. Um, I wanted to take a moment to uh, ask you about the Americans that, that are still mm -hmm. uh, in Russia, in China, in Afghanistan, in other countries around the world. Uh, you have, as Jake mentioned, the American teacher Mark Fogel, who is still in Russia. I believe Jake said that the, that the U.S. is going to work on getting him out as well. Um, you have uh, musician Michael Travis Leake. You have Russian-American dual citizens such as uh, Ksenia Karolina and others in Russia. And you have, uh, I can name only a handful of them, Mark Sweden and Kai Lee. Henry Kai in China, some advocacy and human rights groups believe there are anywhere between 11 cases to as many as 200 Americans or dual Americans held in China. And of course, there's Afghanistan, you've got Ryan Corbett, George Glesman, Mahmoud Habibi, mm. three Americans held in Afghanistan. What is this department's message to the Americans who are still out there? Um, and what is it, what does today bring uh, any insights or any experience that will now be applied in trying to get more Americans home. So our message is is pretty simple, and it is that uh, while today is a good day, uh, that the work doesn't stop. And to uh, the American citizens who uh, continue to be wrongfully detained or held hostage around the world, uh, let me just be very clear that uh, this government, this administration, uh, is not going to stop working. Uh, we're going to continue to work tirelessly around the clock to do everything we can to make sure that they, uh, like uh, Paul, like Evan, like Alsu, like Vladimir, uh, can have a day where they can be reunited uh, with their loved ones as well. Um, of course, in the case of Mark Fogel, we've spoken about this before, we have called for Mark's humanitarian release, and we will continue to uh, engage and work through um, our team in Moscow uh, and continue to have those conversations. And of course, look, um, there continue to be American citizens uh, detained in uh, legal systems around the world, not, of course, just in Russia. Uh, this is a responsibility that we take seriously. Uh, we are monitoring those cases cases and uh, assessing additional ways that we can engage. And look, regardless of whether an American is a designated as wrongfully detained or not, which of course, as you all know, is uh, often the vast minority of cases, uh, the State Department, the United States works hard to ensure that uh, American citizens have appropriate consular access, that they have appropriate representation in the various foreign legal systems and more. And that work will continue. That work uh, did not stop given the, the, the good news today. And uh, thank you. And can you also give, you said that Blinken had spoken to those who've been released. Um, he spoke to reporters uh, not long ago as well. Uh, we got the audio of that. He understandably sounded very tired. Um, can you give any more color from the call with uh, with the the released Americans? I, I don't have uh, uh, much more information. Um, he had the opportunity to speak with Paul, Alsu, uh, and Evan. Uh, I understand that uh, we're hoping for the secretary to have uh, an opportunity to connect with Vladimir uh, at some point soon. Um, obviously, of course, the secretary is coming off of. Uh, uh, a, 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 a long uh, trip in Asia, uh, but from my uh, readout of the conversation, the uh, our Evan, Paul, and also sounded uh, in good spirits. They obviously, of course, had the opportunity to um, speak to the president as well, and I'm sure they are very eager uh, to see their families, which uh, we know will hopefully happen very, very soon. Thank you. Go ahead, Jillian. Uh, thanks, Rodan. Did the did the United States ask Turkey or prevail upon Turkey to take this? sort of mediator role that they did? 
in the so, first air spot? Uh, okay. I'm just not going to speak to that level of specificity in the operational um, uh, movements of how this deal all came together and how uh, these Americans were returned home beyond just saying we are uh, thankful for the role that uh, Turkey played um, and not only thankful to Turkey, but we're thankful to the other countries that were critical in getting this deal uh, to come together. Uh, and you've heard me mention a number of them before, Germany, Poland, Slovenia, and Norway. Right before we came into the briefing, we had the opportunity to see some of the footage, the first footage of um, Evan and Paul being mm -hmm. transferred this morning. It was while they were still in Russian custody. I know you're very happy, as you should be, with the overall way that this deal has worked out. I'm curious as to the details um, leading up to the moment that they were granted to the United States. It was curious to see the video just because you saw the FSB officers or whoever they were sort of dressed like thugs, manhandling them a little bit as they were coming off the Russian plane. It's not something that we're used to seeing. I'm just wondering if you're happy with the way or have any thoughts on the way that was handled. So look, uh, we're thankful that uh, this uh, deal came together and was able to be executed successfully. We're even happier that these Americans are uh, now uh, safely um, in uh, American uh, custody, for, back of a, for lack of a better word, and they're on their way home to be reunited uh, with their loved ones. Um, look, when it comes to the, the treatment of, uh, of American citizens who are wrongfully detained or held hostage in Russia. Certainly, um, uh, this is not a government that um, anybody should be taking uh, any lessons from, for, for again, lack of a better phrase. The fact that people like Paul, like Evan, uh, like Alsu were even uh, detained in the first place um, is pretty indicative of, 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 how, of, of what fair treatment and humane treatment uh, means to them. But I'm not going to speculate on any, anything beyond that. What, one more. Sure, sure. Um, do you have any concerns or plans in place to prevent today's victory from uh, like encouraging the Russians or any other countries to continue to take American hostages? So look, these negotiations, and you saw the National Security Advisor talk a little bit about this, these negotiations uh, are, uh, they are tough, and they are tough precisely because the other side that is holding these Americans wrongfully detained, they hold the key uh, to the prison cell. Uh, they get a vote, they have a say in this process, uh, as maddening and as frustrating as that is. Um, so. We, uh, the president, made a, a tough decision. He made a decision like many others have before him. Uh, the ultimate question here is, do we let uh, our people, our American citizens, rot uh, and potentially die unjustly in foreign detention? Or uh, do we uh, make efforts to bring them home? And we chose time and time again, uh, in this case, in the case of Brittany Griner, in the case of uh, the six American citizens that were released from Iran, we have, and, and in numerous other instances, we've chose time and time again uh, to bring them home. And um, we're incredibly proud of that decision. Uh, uh, outside of that, we'll continue to engage with allies and partners. This is something that the secretary um, is incredibly uh, personally focused on. It's something that has been discussed a number of times, not just through the auspices of the United Nations, but the G7 and others, of ways in which um, allies and partners can collectively work together to uh, uh, better protect its citizens from um, this kind of uh, detention and hostage taking. But I don't have any uh, news to share beyond that on that front. Yeah. Alex, go ahead. Uh, you start off by uh, describing them all unjustly detained. And the secretary spoke with also as well, along with the others. I was wondering, what, how did, what did he say to also, you know, uh, given the fact that she never got this formal designation that she deserves? And the fact that it, it was a formal designation. Can you say us, tell us anything about Roger's involvement in her case? In this so, process? so look, um, a wrongful detention designation. It is a uh, deliberative process. It's an ongoing process, and I'm not going to speak to that process uh, publicly uh, or in detail. But what I can say is that the Department of State, Secretary Blinken, uh, he has been closely engaged in uh, the cases, uh, and he's been particularly vocal in calling for Vladimir Karamurza and Alsu's release. And we're thankful uh, that the deal came together that uh, allowed that to happen today. And I think the second part of your question was. Um, uh, Special Envoy Karsten's involvement. Look, uh, uh, 
the Spiha office and Ambassador Karstens and his team are a key component of uh, an interagency effort when it comes to our round-the-clock work to do everything we can to make sure that um, our uh, American citizens are able to be reunited with their loved ones. Uh, representatives from the office were uh, involved in um, not just the exchange, but are involved in making sure that um, uh, Evan, Paul, also are able to make it back to the United States safely as well. Thank you. I was also wondering how much of a coalition, if you want, uh, you build throughout this process will allow, will help you secure Austin Tice's uh, release, you know, Turkey and others to have a relationship with Syria. We're just entering into another painful anniversary. So look, in, in the case of Syria and in the case of Austin Tice, when the question has come up in this briefing room and in other contexts, when we're asked to react to countries uh, deciding to take certain bilateral actions or relationships with vis-a-vis uh, -vis Syria, uh, one of the things that we have talked about consistently and clearly is that any country um, who has a, a, a relationship with Syria, who uh, claims to have influence with Syria, uh, needs to raise uh, Austin's case and needs to uh, do everything they can to help uh, uh, so that the Syrians can shed light on um, uh, Austin's status. Uh, that continues to be the case. I don't have any updates uh, uh, as it relates to his detention, uh, but of course, uh, in that context, in this context, of course, we are seeing uh, the the impact of diplomacy, the impact of having alliances and partnerships at work. Again, my, my final one on this, given what you just told us uh, in your response to Daphne's question, can you assure us that there will be no discussion with the Russians about Ukraine without Ukraine? That is absolutely uh, our policy, Alex. Thank yeah. You. Go ahead, Said. Thank you. Yeah, the, of course, it's a great. Is this? Day. Do you want before? I think there might be a couple other questions on the oh, news of today. By, by um, if you have questions on that, happy to talk to well, them, or I, I can I, come back okay, to you. I, I definitely want want to ask you about this, but I defer to okay. the others Thank that you, are here. Thank you. Thank um, you uh, I'm gonna go. I, I'll come to you after. I mean, he had his hand up before you. Go ahead. President Biden yeah. said he didn't need to talk to Vladimir Putin about this. Um, it doesn't sound like there's a major change in relations between the U.S. and Russia. Because there's not. And that is, uh, I forget, forget which of your colleagues asked the question. Uh, this is not some sort of uh, reset of any kind of relationship. It is not, uh, there has been no change. This is a, uh, a good day because American citizens are able to come home and for incredibly proud of the work that has happened uh, to get that done. But uh, as I just said, uh, Russia's aggression into Ukraine continues. Uh, Russia continues to show no desire to engage in good faith when it comes to uh, our Ukrainian partners. Uh, they continue to have Russian uh, security forces on Ukrainian territory. They continue to assault uh, Ukrainian men, women, and children. Uh, they continue to occupy territories um, that uh, belong to uh, our partners in Ukraine. So again, um, uh, in that regard, uh, we intend to continue to stand with our Ukrainian partners. Just on Monday, we announced another uh, presidential drawdown authority. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just a quick follow-up. Uh, do you have any, you know, further comments on the Turkish mediation efforts in this prisoner swap? Uh, you know. Uh, what was their specific contribution uh, in this deal? Like, were they a party in the negotiation process? So, uh, I'm not going to speak to the specific negotiation or the operational details of the process. Obviously, um, the location of this swap uh, took place in Ankara, which, as we all know, to be in Turkey. So, of course, there is the uh, physical piece of this of where uh, the exchange and uh, took place. Uh, we are thankful for Turkey's role as it relates to that. Uh, of course, Turkey continues to be a vital uh, partner and ally, uh, and we work with them on a great deal of things, uh, but I'm not going to speak to the specifics of this process beyond that. Uh, okay, Saeed, Thank go you. ahead. Uh, I, uh, like uh, everyone in this room and around the country, uh, feel uh, grateful that they have been released and reunited with their families. It's a good day. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in the same thing, you know, uh, journalists should not be punished for what they do anywhere in the world. That is absolutely yeah. true, Said. But we have, we have seen yesterday is a premeditated crime to kill a journalist for doing their job. They were right there in the front of Ismail Haniyeh's home just to show the destroyed home. 
from our, you know, from our colleague from Al Jazeera, Ismail Gul and his cameraman Rami, and they were told by the Israelis to leave the scene. They did. They got in their car and they moved, and then they were bombed. I mean, this is that is summary execution, isn't it? Said, uh, I spoke to this uh, a little bit yesterday, uh, and the good news that we have relating to um, these American citizens who uh, have returned, uh, who will be returning to the United States, uh, I don't have an update on this other right. situation okay, for you, Riyadh. You're... That let me just say because you've asked the question. The reports that you mentioned yesterday as well, we've seen those reports. We're tracking the details. We continue to engage with our partners in Israel um, about any additional information. Uh, but beyond that, when we have talked about uh, uh, journalists who have been killed in Gaza, this is something um, that uh, the Secretary has spoken to a great deal. Uh, we have. Uh, time and time again offered our not just our condolences to Palestinian journalists uh, killed in Gaza, but we have uh, attempted to make clear just how vital the work of journalism has been uh, to showcase the ongoing dire conditions in the Gaza Strip and how key uh, certain outlets and certain media organizations, including Al Jazeera, have been to that uh, line of effort. Uh, and that's something we will continue to not just say publicly, but we will raise pi privately with partners in the region. We'll continue to stress with our partners in Israel as well. Mm -hmm. Now, there are also dozens of Palestinian journalists who are currently detained uh, by Israel. Uh, overwhelmingly, they're not charged with anything. Uh, they're held under administrative detention and so on. Uh, do you call on the Israeli the government to either charge those journalists that are being held under administrative detention or the go? Look, Said, we've been clear and consistent that Israel uh, needs to treat all detainees humanely okay. with dignity and in accordance with international law, and it, uh, the detainees' human rights must be expected, uh, respected. Beyond that, I'm just not, uh, I don't have specifics as it relates but, to these specific cases to speak to. But certainly you urge the Israelis to release those who are not charged with anything if they don't, if they don't charge them. I, I'm not going to speak to specific cases right. in the uh, ju judicial system that I'm not tracking, but what I want to say again is that we've been clear and consistent that Israel must treat all detainees humanely. Okay, a couple, couple more quick ones. Uh, uh, was there uh, any uh, communication with the Palestinian Authority at, you know, from U.S. officials to the Palestinian officials in the aftermath of the assassination of Ismail Aniyah? Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, specific conversations to read is, is there, uh, I'm happy to check if there's anything yes, said, but I'm not aware of Okay, and lastly, I want to you know, just bring to your attention that uh, you know, an Israeli lawmaker was asked about the alleged rape of the Palestinian detainee, mm -hmm. and uh, he basically said, yes, it is legitimate. And you know, as we look at the, the story, it is really appalling. I mean, it seems, pardon me for the graphic description that I'm about to describe, but they took a cell phone and they shoved it up gluteus, his gluteus maximus, all the way to the intestine, and they were calling the phone, Said, the Israeli soldiers. This is documented. So I mean, we, how, don't you find this appalling? We are uh, aware of these concerning reports, and of course, if they are true, they are appalling. Uh, the IDF itself has indicated that it is looking into these allegations, and we, of course, uh, welcome that. Uh, it is essential that the rule of law, law, the rule of law, and due process prevail. Uh, and in democracies, no one is above the law, and so we are going to let the process play out here. Uh, but of course, these reports are incredibly concerning. Uh, but there is an investigation uh, taking place, and therefore, I don't want to uh, offer any judgment until that process uh, has concluded. Okay. And lastly, on the negotiations, any update on the negotiations? Are they ongoing? Are they likely to resume? Are they frozen? Uh, as, I said, as I said as recently as yesterday, Said, right. we yeah. continue to believe that a deal is not just urgent, but also achievable. Uh, we're going to continue to remain focused on working around the clock to narrow uh, some of the gaps. Uh, getting this deal done to bring the hostages home to end the violence in Gaza is incredibly uh, important. And for those of you that heard the secretary um, at his press conference in Mongolia uh, overnight, uh, he echoed uh, the very same thing. Thank you. Daphne, you had your hand up. Go ahead.
Thank you. Can I just follow up on some of the comments Lincoln made in Mongolia? Sure. Where he said that getting to a ceasefire requires all parties to stop taking escalatory actions. Uh, the administration has repeatedly said that Israel has a right to defend itself. Is it the administration's view in the past few days that Israel has gone beyond that right at all and um, that the actions have been escalatory? I, I don't have an uh, assessment to offer uh, on the events of the recent days beyond uh, echoing what the secretary has said. First, of course, that uh, for uh, us to get to a ceasefire, for us to get this region out of endless cycles of violence, for us to uh, create conditions so hostages can come home, uh, we absolutely think a ceasefire is necessary. and. Uh, uh, the way, one of the ways to do that is to ensure that steps are taken that uh, do not escalate uh, tensions. Uh, we've, the secretary has uh, been engaging with partners in the region despite being in the Indo-Pacific. You all have seen readouts from a number of calls happen where he's been uh, stressing the importance of that message as well. And then you said yesterday that it was still your assessment that Israel was engaging constructively in ceasefire talks. What makes you confident that that is the case? Uh, I'm not going to speak to the uh, specifics of the ongoing negotiation process, but the uh, question was posed to us whether uh, we believe uh, Israel was uh, engaging in good faith, and that uh, continued to be the case yesterday and continues to be the case. And are there any plans for him to speak with Israeli counterparts in uh, today and the next coming days? So we engage with our, our partners in Israel uh, regularly. The secretary spoke to President Herzog uh, earlier in the week. Uh, I don't have any specific calls to preview. Uh, as you saw, the White House uh, mentioned, uh, or the National Security Advisor responded to a question about uh, a call between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, that we anticipate will take place uh, later today. But uh, beyond that, I don't have anything to pre preview. Camilla, go ahead. Just following on uh, the calls that the sec yeah. Secretary's been making over the last 24 hours, 48 hours, um, to Middle East partners, have has the department reached out to Saudi counterparts at all to get any kind of reaction on the deaths of Ishmael Hania and also Israel has confirmed the death of Mohammed so Hanif. We expect the secretary to partake in a number of uh, additional partner calls. I'm not going to uh, list them off um, uh, as a as a as a list, uh, but as is consistent, we will make sure to uh, share readouts of those when they take place. But uh, is, I don't have anything to preview. Is there any that. concern that the Saudis might have the same? sentiment that the Qataris initially had? I, I'm just not going to speculate on uh, what a call may or may not look like uh, until it's uh, until it's happened. I don't have any specific uh, thing to speculate on. Janie, go ahead. Thank you, Bedan. Uh -huh. Provocations. Uh, garbage balloons sent by North Korea to South Korea fell on 3,300 locations including the presidential office and uh, the Ministry of Defense and the U.S. military bases in South Korea, and they even started the fires. What is your view on North Korea's continued provocations in an Relational ways. Well, this, I mean, that it is exactly that. It is a provoc is a, it is a provocation. It is something that we find to be uh, reckless um, and uh, destabilizing, and uh, also just wholly unhelpful. Yeah. Also, uh, there are many Americans living in South Korea. What response measures do you think are necessary? For response measures, for, yeah, for, for what? yeah, your many Americans living in South Korea, including you know military families. Of so. course. So look, um, our uh, consular efforts are of vital importance to us. We um, take the safety and security of Americans incredibly seriously. I don't have any specifics to offer as it relates to efforts in the Republic of Korea uh, beyond just saying that uh, that's something we uh, will continue to address um, as needed. Tracy, you've had your hand up. Oh, yes, sorry. sorry, didn't mean to. No, you're good. To my colleagues' questions yeah. um, on the Middle East. Sorry to go back yeah. to the Middle East. All good. Um, on those calls, is um, is the is is uh, um, Secretary Blinken receiving assurances that these countries are still on board with this process of negotiation, 
or to the contrary, is is he getting people backing out? Like you know, we heard initially from the Qataris, they they exp express resist, um, reluctance. Let's say. So look, I'm Any not sure it's one way or the other. I, I'm not going to read out the calls more specifically than we already have been, and certainly I'm not going to speak for other countries. But there continues to be uh, a consensus that a ceasefire deal, one that can, uh, as I've said before, create the conditions for the remaining hostages to return home, create the conditions for humanitarian aid to get into Gaza, create conditions for further diplomacy to take place to get this region out of endless cycles of violence. Uh, our partners in the Arab world, our partners around the world, our allies and partners um, all believe that that is in the vital interest of, of the region and that uh, work is going to continue to remain on ongoing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, a UN report yesterday expressed concerns uh, about the rise of terrorist groups in Afghanistan. The report claims yeah. that uh, ISIS and TTP, Tariqa Taliban, Pakistan have more than 6,000 fighters attacking on Pakistani soldiers uh, and pose a threat to regional peace. What are your thoughts on that? So, um, we've spoken a little bit about this before. ISIS K is a transnational terrorist network that um, has the ambition and capacity to launch international terrorist attacks. And as we consistently say, we're working to ensure that Afghanistan never serves as a launching pad for terrorist uh, attacks against the United States or our allies. Uh, we are taking a whole of government approach to our Afghanistan counterterrorism efforts. We are cooperating with partners and allies, including in the immediate region, and we're working vigilantly to prevent the reemergence of external threats from Afghanistan, including by working with partners to uh, counteract terrorist recruitment efforts as well. So Bloomberg reported another assassination attempt on US citizen and human rights lawyer Group of Singh Pandu by Indian agents Canadian authorities claim to have arrested five Indian nationals planning to target Mr. Panu at a wedding ceremony. The U.S. is still waiting for the results of internal investigation by India. Um, so what kind of uh, conversations going on with India, like at the diplomatic level on these? So first, as it relates to the news that you mentioned out of Canada, I would refer you to the Canadian government to comment on um, issues that are happening within their law enforcement system. Uh, as we have said before, we continue to expect accountability from the government of India in relation to the alleged role of an uh, Indian government employee in the failed attempt to assassinate a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil that uh, occurred last summer. And we continue to to raise our concerns directly with the Indian government at senior levels. Uh, Jackson, go ahead. Thanks, Vidan. Um, so uh, speaking of Mark Flovo, did the United States try to get him as part of the deal? So I'm not going to speak to the specifics of the negotiation process, um, Jackson. What I will reiterate is what you've heard the National Security Advisor say, what I just said earlier to one of your colleagues. Uh, we've called for uh, Mark's release on humanitarian grounds, and we'll continue uh, to work that effort uh, in close coordination with our uh, team in, uh, in Embassy Moscow. Um, and Venezuela's uh, Maduro says he's open to restart dialogue with the U.S. after the Qatar agreement failed. Is the U.S. even interested in dialogue with Maduro at this stage? Well, in the in the in the context of uh, Venezuela, it's a little bit important to uh, take uh, the step take a step back here. I think first, uh, in the context of the presidential election specifically, uh, we applaud the Venezuelan people for their participation in the July twenty eighth uh, presidential election. Uh, we know that at least. 12 million people peacefully went to the polls and exercised their right to vote. And that the sum of more than the 80% of the tally sheets published by the Democratic opposition uh, and received directly from polling stations show that Edmundo Gonzalez uh, received an overwhelming majority of the votes in this election. The CNE's rapid declaration of Maduro as the winner uh, comes uh, with no supporting evidence. And meanwhile, Venezuelan opposition and civil society uh, provided de 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 decisive evidence showing that Edmundo Gonzalez received a majority of the votes in this election. It's been four days since this election happened. Any polling station data or results the CNE releases now would require close scrutiny. Uh, and so we're continuing to consult with our national partners on appropriate next steps. Um, and has the U.S. received a letter from Israeli Foreign Minister uh, Katz stating Israel is not interested in an all-out war, but the only way to prevent it is the immediate 
implementation of Resolution 1701. What does this say about the risk of escalation along the Israeli-Lebanese border? Uh, I'm not uh, tracking a, a, a letter, but what I can say is that the, the contours of that is uh, what the United States, at least what we've been speaking to specifically in the context of ensuring a, uh, a diplomatic resolution uh, along the blue line. Of course, uh, you heard me talk a little bit about this on Monday and Tuesday as well, of great importance to us continues to be creating the conditions so civilians on both sides of the border, both on in Israel and in, in Lebanon, are able to safely uh, return home. And just go ahead. I'm gonna work thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead in the back. Uh, I wanna ask about how many times the USA ask Israel to investigate itself and what is the result? Look, uh, over the course of this conflict, let's be uh, clear about uh, uh, something first. Israel has every right to defend itself, uh, to defend itself from uh, terrorist attacks and threats, and to hold account the Hamas terrorist actors that um, uh, conducted the horrific October 7th um, uh, attacks on the Israeli people. Uh, over the course of this conflict also, when we have taken issue with action, when we have uh, seen inconsistencies in how operations are conducted, when we have seen civilians impacted, when we have seen the flow of humanitarian aid uh, uh, impacted, we have raised those issues with our partners in Israel. We will continue to do so. In some of those instances, we will discuss those privately. In some instances, we'll discuss those publicly, but we'll continue to engage appropriately with our partners in Israel. Will you say will ask a Palestinian civilian to investigate themselves? Pardon me. Will you say will ask civilian Palestinian to investigate themselves? I'm, I'm not sure I follow your question. When it comes to uh, our partners in Israel and their conduct around certain operations, when we have needed or solicited additional information, we have done that, and we engage with our partners in Israel around the clock, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, go ahead in the back. Thank you. Uh, it's great that Vladimir Karamurza is free. There are Armenian POWs in the jails of Azerbaijan for four, not four years by now. Uh, and there are Armenian local politicians from Nagorno-Karabakh, again, in the prisons of Azerbaijan for nearly one year uh, after Azerbaijan launched another unprovoked attack last fall. Uh, according to Freedom House, after a, a, a Karabakh uh, territory came under Azerbaijani control, uh, Karabakh is the most unfree territory in the world. It's worse than North Korea, it's worse than Venezuela, Syria, Afghanistan, you name it. So the question is whether uh, you follow the situation with the collapse of liberties and civil society in Nagorno-Karabakh, if you have any comments on this, and is there anything that this administration can do to help the detained Armenians in, that are jailed in Azerbaijan, whether to, you can help them to release, to be released, or assist in 